Robert Lambert. I'm an exercise physiologist from the um, exercise science and sports medicine department in South Africa, Cape Town. So what we basically tried to do is we wanted to know how reliable is the computer and as a device when we actually put a cyclist on there. So if we talk about measurement error, we talk about a measurement error of the device itself and we talk about a measurement error of the athlete that's doing the testing itself. Now, when we know and we look in the general population, that measurement error is about 2 to 3 percent and we wanted to know if this measurement error was the same in well-trained cyclists or not. And assuming that well-trained cyclists are able to perform more repeatedly as the pacing strategy is just the same, we were thinking that it's possibly, we can possibly lower that percentage and that measurement error. Error in a general population is about 2 to 3 percent. And what we know from a performance and high performance angle is that a 1 percent difference is already meaningful for those athletes. So we wanted to know if, with a very strict tr testing protocol and with using well-trained guys and a device as the computer, if we could see if we can lower that, that error and that measurement error under, under that 1% so we can actually measure and track changes in training steady over time in these athletes. We've been using the Computer Trainer Pro that we actually standing next to at the moment. Um, for us in, in the research lab, it's been shown to be highly reliable. We, we've been using it for about four or five years now. It's, it, um, the reliability of the uh, of the computer trainer is good. The uh, it's, it's practically easy easy usable as well. I think the, the big advantage that we find is that we're able to put the cyclist on the device and the, the person can actually use his own bike. So the the setup of the bike is basically the same. They they've got their own saddle height. They've got their own preferred bike setting, and therefore I think that really helps in in securing a, a reliable. Uh, testing as well because if you're going to put somebody onto a a, a, a a device in which basically you have to you still have to adjust the saddle height and you have to adjust the 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 the, the reach towards the, uh, the the steering wheel it's going to change the dynamics and it's going to it's going to definitely influence the performance athletes and especially it's going to influence the repeatability of the uh, of of the of the testing that you do and the training that you do as well so from that perspective, we've been very, very happy with the with the, with the computer trainer. We've we've been using the computer trainer for for two ways actually. The one side is that we've been using computer trainers uh, as a testing and device for scientific research. The other thing that we've been using it for is for bike setups. Uh, from a from a commercial point of view, what we run through the high performance cycling uh, center. Uh, where well, we've got a cycling division where we do bike setups for athletes and we use the computer trainer and the different aspects of the computer trainer to optimize the bike setup. An uh, example of that is the spin scan, for instance, where we use to optimize saddle height and uh, lay back up the saddle but also reach. And we also can use it for other purposes as well. For instance, if people come in with uh, with a knee problem or other back pain problems, we can actually use the spin scan data to see where this is going wrong and, and, and what we can pick up through that and then adjust it and see if that actually improves the efficiency, if it relieves the pain from the athlete and um, if it makes any change in, in power output and uh, if that really helps from that perspective. And what, what we can conclude is that the computer trainer is a reliable device very suitable for using it in, in both the scientific world but also as a practical tool. It's able to measure changes over time in an accurate way. You need, you need to do your outdoor riding as well, and, and, but certain, certain training sessions or weather circumstances make it not possible to do those training sessions outdoor, but also like high interval training sessions itself. They're very hard to perform in an outdoor situation, and that's where the computer training comes into play. And you can basically build up your own, your own profiles and we know that from, from the different studies that we've done that high interval training is one of the training, session, tra training types that is actually really, really effective and therefore should be integrated in, a, in everybody's basically standard training program. It needs to be phased out. You cannot do high interval training the whole year through, but you need to integrate it throughout. And especially those type of training sessions, that's where the computer trainer can play an important role because you can do it much more accurately on a computer trainer than you could do it on the road outdoors. So it's, it's, it's really a... It's, it's a as far as we can judge over it from both the scientific point of view, it's also a, a practical point of view. It's a very highly reliable device. Uh, we've been using it extensively over the last four or five years, and um, I can definitely recommend it.